It is Friday, July 29th, 2011. Welcome to another special World Championship edition of the Morning Swim Show. I'm Peter Bush here in the Swimming World Studios where we're going to recap today's swimming in Shanghai. Joining us once again from Shanghai, Swimming World Magazine senior writer John Lone. John, welcome back. How are you doing? Doing well, Peter. How are you? I'm doing well, John. I usually don't do this, but I'm starting off with the women's 200 back semifinals. Why? Okay. Because Missy Franklin, even though she's likely to win only one event, is going to be the story of the meet on the women's side. She is an exceptional talent, and we're just beginning to see what she's capable of. Tomorrow night in the final of that 200 backstroke, Kirsty Coventry's world record is in serious danger. That's 204 eight and franklin's going to give that thing uh, a serious serious run have you seen her around deck or talked to her you know post race I mean, how's she feeling right now the the great thing about her is she's enjoying this to no end she she has she's not rattled in any way whatsoever and that's obviously evident in the way she's racing she's bubbly she she's enjoying herself and she, she knows when to get down to business, but she's doing it in a way where she just has a, a fun personality. And it seems like it's really rubbing off on the, on the teammates. You can hear there are stories from, from the training camp where everybody's just falling in love with this girl. Well, we've had her on the show once or twice. We've had her coach, Todd Schmitz, on a bunch of times. He's always said that. She's very fun. She enjoys the sport. She doesn't take it too seriously. And we're beginning to see that on a world stage and what she can really do. I mean, obviously the potential is there for seven medals next year. You never know what will happen. I think the only one that she could have trouble winning, as crazy as it sounds, for a 16-year-old is the 100 free. But I think the other three, 100, 200 back, and the 200 free, it's not a stretch to think she's the gold medal winner next year. Things are really shaping up for her to, to do some special things. We're going to get a really good idea in some other events what she can do. We'll, we'll, when she goes to nationals from here, we'll see a hundred backstroke time. She's slated to swim the two hundred IM. It's just going to be neat to see a couple more times when she's in a rested state. Now, I don't think she'll excel as well as she has here because let's face it, that's going to be a long flight back from Shanghai. The meet will not have the intensity of this one, but still we'll get a pretty good gauge of where she is in some other events as well. Yeah, it's too bad that she can't swim all those events in China. Again, we've, uh, we've harped on the, uh, the qualifying system for this World Championship meet, but it's going to be fun to see her back here in the States and see how she preps for next year. Definitely the person to watch now on the women's side, in my opinion. All right, men's 200 back final. Ryan Lochte wins his third individual gold medal. You know, he's the best swimmer in the world right now. He's slightly ahead of Phelps. Again, they're going to be a blast to watch one, two next year. But uh, this, is a, this is an event that's kind of become one of his babies as well, the 200 back. He took that thing. He, I don't think people are giving it enough credit tonight either, at least for, from here, because the textile mark before tonight was 154.0 by, by Irie of Japan. Ryan just bypassed the 153s altogether to go into the 152 range. It was just another dominating performance. It was Ryan being Ryan in terms of what he's been able to do internationally, Pan Packs last year and now here in Shanghai. He led from start to finish, really mm -hmm. poured it on that last 100, which is no surprise to anyone who knows how Lochte swims. Tyler Clary was third. It's a good swim for Tyler. A positive, especially with the way the 200 butterfly went, where he didn't even make the, the championship final. I think he's got to take some, some real confidence out of this race tonight into the 400 IM on the last day of the meet. So Lochte is going to end up probably winning four golds once he wins the 400 IM, which I presume he will. He'll have his mm -hmm. three relay medals, probably two gold and a bronze. Um, well, well two, I don't know. That medley is going to be tight, actually. But well, two, two relay medals because I don't think he'll be on the medley. They, don't, they won't put him on? Uh, it, it's going to be very difficult to find a way to put him on right now for this reason. Both Thoman and Plummer were 53-0. That was, th those are very respectable backstroke times. It'd be awfully tough to put him on there. He did swim the fly leg at the World Shore Course Championships, but Tyler McGill looked very good today in the semifinals. I just don't think there's room for, for Ryan to be anywhere on the medley relay. Well, if he wants to figure out how to even come close to what 
Phelps did in Beijing, he's going to have, I mean, next year he's going to have to push that hunter back then to try and yeah. get on all those relays. All right. Yeah, there's time for that. Okay. Well, next, next event we'll talk about the women's hunter free final. Americans, are, are they just gassed right now? Not good efforts, that's for sure, to not break 54 seconds. Um, not sure what to make of that, to be quite honest with you. I, I just don't think maybe we're as strong individually in that 400, 400 uh, or 100 freestyles. When you put together really solid legs in the 400 free relay like they did to get the silver medal, that was one thing. But yeah, individually, uh, it's not quite there right now, which is another reason that Missy Franklin can come along and and all of a sudden put the U.S. back on the map in that event. Oh, she's definitely a medal contender. But again, I think this is the one that will be most difficult for her to win. We had a tie at the top, Jeanette Otteson and Alexandra Harrisomenia, 53-4, both solid times. Fran Halsell's time was just a few hundredths slower from semis. She ended up getting fourth. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, this is an event right now for the Americans on the women's side. I mean, unless Missy gets in the conversation, which we expect she will, but uh, seventh and eighth is just very un-U.S. like for a major competition. Yeah, I, I agree, Peter. There's there's some work to do there. All right, women's 200 breaststroke. We thought we might see a world record here with good reason. Rebecca Sony has been dominating this event, and she's been knocking on that 220 door, well, the sub 220 door, we should say. But again, she showed us that she tends to go faster in semis than she does in the finals. Does she ever talk about that? She doesn't. I'm not sure there's there's a mental part of that at all. I just think she's one of those swimmers who who tends to go fast every round. And sometimes her finals will be a little bit faster than a semi. Sometimes it'll be the other way around. The bottom line is she got the win. She is completely dominating these events. Now, I know Yulia Efimova came up on her a little bit down the last 25 meters or so. But it was just—it was one of those situations where there was no, there was no way she was going to get fully caught. She, she right now is the most dominant swimmer in a single, single stroke that that's out there. I agree, and it's good for her to have the monkey off her back. But Yulia Efimova, I mean, you mentioned her, but two twenty-two two, she was less than a second off, and the way she closed on her, I just wonder if there's any reason for concern next year that you know we've got this girl who's at least in the same ballpark. And she obviously knows how to finish a race. I'm not very concerned. I'm not concerned at all with Rebecca. It, just because of the track record she's put together now since that loss in Rome. There's no, I think uh, Eric Bull, who works for Los Angeles Daily News and, and covers Rebecca a lot, said she's won 30 some odd consecutive races now in a championship situation. And that, that tells me there is no concern. Third place was 224.81. I bring that up because I think that's reason to be optimistic for someone like Amanda Beard or whoever ends up being the second American breaststroker in that event. Because if that's going to be the third fastest time in the world, I think Amanda can reach that and get on the medal stand next year. It's doable, definitely, because this is not one of the world's deeper events. That, As you just pointed out, Peter, if you look at the times, this event is missing a number of superstars. There's Rebecca Sony, there's FMOVA, and then the drop-off is significant. All right, before we uh, take a commercial break, I want to mention a little story. Anna Mae Pierce is the world record holder in this event, 22012. She got eighth place at 22700. Now, I'm by no means making a direct connection, but there was an interesting story yesterday. On my Twitter account, I got sent some sort of spam direct message and without my knowing it, it automatically forwarded on to Anime Pierce. And it said something to the effect of, you want to read this, people are saying really bad stuff about you. And within minutes, she was sending me direct messages back, obviously with some concern, like, should I read this before my 200 breast final? You know, I don't know if I want to. So I, I haven't been able to clear it up with her because my Twitter account's been kind of deactivated in the meantime. Um, Again, I, I don't know if that had anything to do with a poor performance, but just sort of an interesting backstory on how technology can uh, be a little screwy these days and who knows, maybe even cause a world championship incident. All right, let's take a quick commercial break. We'll talk about the men's 200 breast and the other events from today right after the break.
Welcome back. We're talking about the latest day in swimming in Shanghai. Next event, the men's 200 breaststroke. John, this was a great race. This is exactly how I saw it unfolding, too, because this is how Danny Yurta wins races. Kusuke Kitajima took the thing out. Yurta held, held close enough. This kid, he was featured in Swimming World magazine when he was 12 years old as being one of the next great Hungarian breaststrokers because of the rich history that country has in the event. Since he became an international, uh, on the international stage and a star at like 15, he has always just tracked people down and, and just hammered that last lap. And there it was again today. Last meter or so is where he took, o he took over Kitajima. Back-to-back -back world titles. It's the first time in that event that somebody's gone back-to-back -back since the first two editions of the uh, world championships. His final 50 was 33-7. Kitajima yeah. was 34-4. He must have just gone right by him like he was standing still there at the end. The amazing thing is the German who got the bronze actually outsplit Yurta by three tenths. He was 33-4, which Christian von, von Lem is somebody we're going to have to keep an eye on because he seems to be getting better and better. Not a bad time for Eric Shantou, 2092, but he's got to be disappointed he's not, he doesn't get a medal. It's a t it was a tough spot because it is a good swim for him. But, yeah, when you're representing the United States, you want to be on the podium. All right, men's 50 free semis. We got another Brazilian. Who is this Bruno Fratis guy? I was shocked. When he went 21-7, I'm thinking, where, where was that coming from? Everybody's eyes are on Cielo, and rightfully so. And Cielo then in the post-race uh, post said, and he's probably playing a little bit of mind games, too, that there's no doubt about it. Fratis is the guy to beat tomorrow. Hey, the games are being played. Here we go. All right, so both the Brazilians, 21-7. A couple tens ahead of Nathan Adrian, who's 21-9. And a couple tens in a 50 is no small amount. So no. does Nathan have any shot at winning this thing? I think Nathan's just looking to get a bronze medal, get, make up for what was a poor swim in the 100 freestyle. Peter, real quick, if, just looking at these times, and the 21-7 is your best, and that record is 20.9, it just shows how ridiculous that event became with the suits. Yeah, good point. And Fred Bousquet, one of the guys who was going off in those suits, not even making the semifinals in his baby event. He said afterward he knew he was behind at 25, and he figured he would overtake the, you know, he would swim fast enough in the end of his prelim swim to slide in there. Sounds like it was just a poor calculation on his part. Of all events, how do you poorly calculate a 50? <laughs> how do you presume anything in the 50 other than <laughs> swim as fast as you can for 50 meters? Makes no sense. All right, quick mention of the women's 50 fly semis. Therese Allsommer is the class of this event right now, 25-5. Inga Decker, 25-7. Uh, Sarah Sostrom, your world record holder in the 100, she's fourth. Mm -hmm. I just bring her up because she's got impressive versatility, too. We've been talking about Missy Franklin can go from 50 to 200. Sostrom's obviously similar. Yeah, she had a very good 200 freestyle the other day. We, we've, she's best known for what she can do in the butterfly events. But you're right, Peter. She, she has shown some nice range. All right, we've gone way too long without talking about Michael Phelps here, some sort of swimming mm -hmm. world rule where we should have brought him up in the first three minutes. All right, men's hunter fly semis. Phelps, 51-4. He's your lead qualifier, but not by much. It was such an easy swim by Michael. I, he didn't put out much at all, was trying to save himself up for that 800 free relay at the end of the night. I think we're going to see him tomorrow push the 50.40 that Ian Crocker went at the 2005 World Championships. That's the best textile time ever. And, and that, that, that swim by Crocker back in the day was was a defining swim. It was such a huge jump in terms of a record. I think we'll see Michael down in the 50 low area tomorrow. Tyler McGill, the other American, definitely in the medal hunt, 51-5. He's qualified third right now. Impressive depth in this event. All top eight qualifiers, under 52. It's going to be a really, a really interesting battle for the silver and bronze spots because it's a pretty open event. What happened to Michael Cavage? Uh, he sounds like he had this from the surgery he had for a herniated disc in his back. He hasn't just had the training to get where he needs to be. His focus will be London, seeing if he can 
get back to where he was 2008, 2009. Oh, you know NBC hopes that's the case. They would love to show oh, that replay comes. over and over. They'll, they'll love that. All right, final event of the day was the men's 800 free relay. USA wins pretty easily, no surprise. You know what was interesting, though, that France really made a heck of a nice showing to push the United States for a while, and Ryan Lochte had to go in on the anchor leg and do a little work to get some separation. Michael was not thrilled with his leadoff leg, 145 mid. He was actually beaten to the wall by Paul, uh, Paul Biederman and Yannick Agnell. Uh, Vander Kay and Barons then came behind. Had solid 146 splits, but it was Ryan and out splitting the Frenchman by three seconds on the anchor leg to, to really make this thing look like it was, it was comfortable. It was a little tighter than most people expected. But it is the best time ever in textile for that, for that relay. 144.56 was Lochte's anchor leg. So that's his fourth overall gold medal of this mate. Again, we expect him to win the 400 IM. So that would give him a five gold. You know, not Phelps in Beijing, but that's definitely one of the strongest performances in world championship history. It, it would, it's going to rank behind what Michael did in Melbourne when he won seven gold medals. Uh, there was a time in in uh, Japan in 2001 where Ian Thorpe won the 200, 400, 800, I believe all in world record time. Also won, I think, all three relays in 01. So it'll rank behind that, but that's pretty darn good, isn't it? Excellent. Well, uh, you mentioned the Melbourne World Championship from 2007. Just a quick note from yesterday's show. I screwed up, said Brent Hayden had never won the big one or the 100 free at a major event. He did tie for first at that 2007 World Championships in Melbourne. So our bad Brent, thank you to the viewer that pointed that out for us. Really appreciate it. But, uh, John, another great day of swimming. Appreciate your help recapping it all. Thanks for having me, Peter. We'll do it again tomorrow. Sounds good. All right, that's John Lone joining us from Shanghai. I'm Peter Bush in the Swimming World Studios, reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.